In this tutorial, we'll look at how to use the Bootstrap 5 spinner component and create a page loader. All right, so I have an example project here. And let's say when we load the page, we want to have like a preloader or like a spinner before we actually, you know, see the website. So we actually have a spinner component in Bootstrap. And I'm using Bootstrap 5, by the way. So when you Google Bootstrap docs, be a little bit careful because the first link for me here is actually linking to an older version, version 4, right? So we're in version 5 now. So you can go to the homepage get bootstrap.com it will always show you the latest version right so what i would do is i would just copy one of their basic examples here and then uh, modify it to get exactly what i want so they basically have two different types this this uh well round circular spinner i'm gonna copy this but they also have this one i don't really like this one i think this one looks better so i copy this i'm gonna paste it right here and let's see what we get i'm gonna refresh here and we don't actually see anything and that's okay we'll work on that now, what we also want is to have like a black overlay or like a dark overlay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in my own class, which I'm going to call spinner wrapper. I'm going to put this spinner in here, right? This spinner, by the way, also has the span of visually hidden. This is just for um, accessibility. Um, and then this spinner wrapper, let's start there. We're, we're going to do some styling here. Right, so it's really important that you have mastered the underlying fundamentals like CSS, but also JavaScript, right? So make sure you have mastered those skills. I have courses on them. Definitely check them out. The links are in the description. But what we're going to do is we're going to make this a background color of simply black and it's going to cover the entire page. So um, it should also scroll with us if there's content like here. It should scroll with us. Oh, actually, we already see the spinner here, right? So this is not what we want, right? The spinner should sit in the middle right? And um, well, it should not push any other content down or, or whatever, but we'll work on that in a second. Let's work on the black overlay now. This is going to be the black overlay. So we're going to make it position fixed so that it's, you know, it's, it's uh, taken out of the normal flow. So it's not pushing any other content and also scrolls with us. It should sit zero pixels from the top, zero pixels from the left. And then the width and height should be 100%. And let's see what we get. So now we have this uh, black overlay. And it's a little bit strange, but it's sitting below some other elements here. So we want to make sure this sits on top of everything. So I'm just going to give it a very large Z index, right? So now it's sitting on top, right? Even if I scroll, we still have the black um, layer um, overlay. So now we want to get this spinner in the center. And actually, let's change the, uh, the color of the spinner first so we can see it a little bit better. So you can just... Uh, use one of their utility classes they actually show you the colors here so it's actually considered text so we can just give this a class of text primary let's say so then i have a blue spinner here and i want to have this positioned in the center of the page right so i can do that with flexbox so i can say display flex right so it's really important that you understand flexbox um, but so many other things in css as well right and it only takes a couple of hours to really master it i think so definitely check out my course on that my professional css course a lot of people yeah, you know, have written me some wonderful emails and uh, have told me how how uh, beneficial it was for them. So now it's in the center, right, with Flexbox. Justify content here is for the horizontal axis and align items here is for the vertical axis. Okay, now one other thing we can do here is make the spinner a little bit bigger. So now I'm going to select spinner border and I can simply change the height and width. So I can say height uh, 60 pixels with 60 pixels and that will make it a little bit bigger okay so now what we want of course is that after some time this gets removed and we actually see the website All right so now we're going to use some javascript um, what we can do is simply um, reduce the opacity right because we want to get an animation and not all properties in css can be animated right so we're going to use we're going to use display none as well but the display prop display none will not be animated, cannot be animated, but opacity can be animated, right? Because opacity can go from 100% to 0%. So what I'm going to do is select this spinner wrapper, right? So we can say document query selector spinner wrapper, right? I can put it in a separate variable. Let's see spinner wrapper L. I like to append L to indicate that we're selecting an HTML element here. And what we can do with this spinner wrapper l is we can um, well you can manipulate the css in two ways you can create a separate class and then add that class or remove classes right so you have class list you can add a class or remove a class you can also use the style uh, property here and then you can work directly with css in here so we could say style that opacity is zero right? let's actually do that after one second so i'm going to use set timeout 
a timeout after one second, right? So after 1000 milliseconds, we're gonna set the style that opacity to zero here. And now let's refresh after one second. Yeah, after one second, it's gone, right? But this is not very smooth, it's instant, right? So now we wanna make it a transition. So the spinner wrapper here, what we can say here is we can say transition, any property that gets changed. So we, we did not specify the opacity property here, but opacity is by default one, right? Or 100%. And here we're setting it to zero. So we can say that that um, particular property, opacity, that change should happen in, let's say, uh, 0 0.2 seconds. And typically people also write all here, right? So for any property that gets changed, it should happen in 0 0.2 seconds. Let's check it out. So now let's see, right? So now it's a nice uh, sort of fade out animation or transition actually, right? And there's, there's also animations with keyframes. But we don't need that right now. Okay. Now the problem is when you do it like this, when you set the opacity to zero, I cannot click these buttons anymore, right? So it's as if there is still like an element in between my mouse and the buttons and everything else on the page. And that's actually true because with opacity, we don't see it, but it's still there, right? So it's still in the DOM. And so what you also need to do is at the end of this transition, so after this 0 0.2 seconds, we need to remove it from the DOM, right? So what we can do here um, is, let's actually do this when the page loads, right? So when the page has loaded, we want to remove the the overlay and the spinner, right? The spinner will also be removed with this because it's a child element of the spinner wrapper, right? So as long as we remove the spinner wrapper, the the, the, the spinner itself will also be removed. Right? So let's say window .add event listener on the load event, right? So everything has loaded. Then we want to change the opacity to zero, right? Let's see if that works. Right? So here it's going to be very quick, okay? But now we still have this issue, right? I cannot click on anything because opacity zero does not remove it from the DOM. It's still there. It's still taking up space, basically. Um, so that's why the clicking here doesn't work. So what we also want is after this transition of 0 0.2 seconds, we want to remove it. We want to say the display to none. So I'm going to say set timeout after 200 milliseconds, not 2000. That would be two seconds. Here it should be 0 0.2 seconds. Here we can also say spinner wrapper L dot display sorry, dot style dot display, set it to none, right? So this is the difference with uh, opacity zero. Opacity zero does not remove it from the DOM. With display none, we are removing it from the DOM. So we should be able to click again, right? So now it's gone. And now also you can see, I can click again on, on I, can, I can click again on these things, right? And select that, right? Because now this uh, overlay and the spinner, they're not um, in between. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.